For those of us used to the PC graphics card market, it might just feel natural that there's a vast price discrepancy between cards that are technically the same thing. Like you might look at a uh, 5070 and another 5070, but they're priced extremely differently. Uh, here I'm pulling up 9070 XTs on Newegg, and I can get a, uh, well, it's not, none of them are in stock, let's be clear, but there's a model listed at the 599.99 MSRP, some of them a little bit higher, like the Steel Legend, which used to be listed at 599. I've got a separate video on what's going on with the AMD MSRPs here. But anyway, uh, as we scroll down, they get more and more expensive. We got some $700, $720, $730, uh, $750, $740, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750, $750,
increased its power slider as far as you're allowed to go on this card. I could increase it by 10%, which takes it from about 300 watts to about 330 watts. By feeding the card more power, it is then able to try to clock higher uh, if it was power limited. Also, I have tried uh, decreasing the voltage on the card in order to allow it to reach higher clock speeds at the same watts. This is often a very effective way to increase the performance on AMD GPUs, but if you push it too far, you're unstable. I haven't been super aggressive here on either card uh, because I value stability. So I went to what was stable in all the games I could possibly test, and then I even backed it off a little bit from there just to be sure, and I did the same thing when tuning the Red Devil card. Um, so, so that's what we're doing here. Now, there's going to be, even if you buy a Steel Legend or a Red Devil, you're not guaranteed to get the same overclocking or undervolting results that I did here, because there is silicon quality differences. Sometimes you just get lucky, and your particular GPU chip could perform better than others, even if on the same card. Anyway, uh, what we're looking at here is the same idea on the Red Devil, but when I say stock here, out of the box, it was on the performance mode uh, BIOS, the OC BIOS, which means that out of the box, this one is drawing uh, like 330 watts uh, out, of, out of the box. And then uh, when I manually tuned it, it could go 10% higher than that, which pushed it over 360 watts. Also, again, I tried pulling down the voltage as far as I could and still remain stable in all of my games, and this boosted clock speeds a bit. So that's what we're looking at as far as all of these tests go. Now I'm going to kind of shrink down out of the way because the focus is the performance. Let's let, let this play for a minute. It'll be interesting. Here, I'll become a mouse pointer. Ah, I'm tiny. Uh, it'll be interesting to watch the wattage on each card. So again, you can see the Steel Legend at 300 watts versus 330 manually tuned, sometimes spiking a bit above that, whereas the stock Red Devil is running at around the same wattage as the manually uh, power increased uh, Steel Legend, but then when I have manually increased the power limits on the Red Devil, I was able to get it to where it's it's usually around 360 watts. Also notice the clock speeds next to that, and you can see some differences on those. Now, uh, what we end up seeing is that at stock, the Steel Legend is slower than the stock Red Devil. But in this test, Cyberpunk RT, 4K RT Ultra FSR3 performance, that's only a 3% difference, two frames per second, 71 versus 73. When manually tuned, the Steel Legend can actually get beyond the stock Red Devil um, because I'm getting to around the same power target and reducing the, the voltage so it can clock a bit higher, getting 76 FPS, but the Red Devil manually tuned does hit 78. But that's not a lot faster than our manually tuned Steel Legend. Uh, if we try out another built-in benchmark here with Call of Duty Black Ops 6 at 4K basic settings, we can see that the stock Steel Legend is the slowest at 149, and the stock Red Devil on its OC BIOS is 3% faster at 153 versus 149. Whereas if I manually tune the Steel Legend, it hits 158, beating the Red Devil's factory overclock uh, by a little bit. Uh, and then the Red Devil, when manually tuned, hits 160, so slightly but really almost imperceptibly better than the manually tuned Steel Legend. So again, when you think about the price differences on these, uh, you could question uh, whether or not that's really worth it. Anyway, you can also look at the temps the cards are running at here and all of that, and in general, it's looking like my Steel Legend is actually running cooler than my Red Devil. So that's generally the idea. If you go back to the overall pricing, then if you're thinking, wow, is it really worth spending hundreds of dollars more, or over $100 more at least, on a uh, top-end factory overclocked card versus one of the more basic models, well, it really depends on what you value. But if you're just talking in terms of just raw gaming performance, even if you're manually tuning them, it's really not making sense. Um, the, the percentage performance uplift you get from that factory overclocked card, even if it allows you to get a higher overall power limit, uh, doesn't scale evenly with the price increase. So. That is uh, my overall take on that. But again, uh, a lot of times when you're choosing the different cooler models, 
what a lot of people are, uh, are also considering is just what looks cool in their build. And it's hard to put a value target on that because some people do not care what their build looks like at all. It's gonna be shoved behind a desk somewhere and you, or maybe in a case without even a window on it and you just wanna play games. Whereas for other people, I think the PC itself is kind of a art show piece in their room. It's a focal point, they spend a lot of time with that. Uh, and, and they care a lot about it. I mean, this is kind of like cosmetic items in, in games, right? Like some people will pay ridiculous money for a cosmetic item that does not impact gameplay at all. And it, it's up to them to decide what the value is for that. Personally, I don't do that kind of thing. So my general preference and advice for people who care about value to performance is generally to buy the cheapest card out there uh, because even if the other one's a little bit better, it's not by much. And usually it doesn't scale evenly with price, but I will put a bit of a caveat on that. Um, you're also buying from different companies, different brands. And so you might look into what their warranty policies are, what kind of reputations they have for customer service. Uh, and that is another thing you're purchasing when you buy one of these cards. So you're buying from a different company with different policies and support and things like that. And another thing is, while I'm giving the general advice that the, uh, you know, the factory overclock cards are probably not worth it, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that aren't occasionally specific cooler models that have a flawed design. Uh, we've seen this rarely, but there are certain ones that are just a bad design. It's not cooling something properly, and it's much worse than its competition. That's fairly rare, but it does happen. So it is worth maybe taking a look if you're about to buy a GPU and just making sure that whatever you're getting is uh, at least fine and <laughs> reasonably okay. It hits the reference spec it's supposed to. Anyway, hopefully you guys found this video useful and or interesting, especially people who are maybe newer to getting into PC gaming, where you're like, uh, I saw all the reviews said a 9070 XT offered good value, but then they all cost different dollars. So what, what do I do? Or any other GPU, right? Like, why is this one so much more expensive than that one? <laughs> uh, general gaming performance, it's not worth it. If you want to buy from a certain brand or have your GPU look a certain way or whatever, that's up to you to place value on. Objective performance numbers wise, uh, generally the, buy the cheapest one you can get and it's the best value. <laughs> I hope all of you have an excellent day.